Hey friends, I just got back from the Origami USA convention 2023 and let me tell you about it. The Origami USA convention was a blast. There is a lot of folding and even more friends. Now, before I dive into the convention events, I want to shout out the three special guests we had this year who made the convention truly special. The three guests were Miyuki Kawamura, Paul Jackson, and Bodo Hogg. If you haven't heard of them, they are all pioneers in their origami genres and have helped lead both their local communities and the greater international origami community into what we have today. We will hear more from them later as I got the privilege to interview all three of them. So stay tuned for that. I mentioned friendship, and that was a strong motif of this convention. Shout out to the members of the Origami Dan Discord who were able to make it and hang out. It is always special getting to meet folders in person who you previously only knew online. In previous convention vlogs, this is when I typically show the amazing exhibition. But instead of me showing it, let's actually hear from the exhibitors themselves. Hey friends, boys from the future. Now, just a quick disclaimer, unfortunately, the video footage from Yuki and Paul's interviews got corrupted. I still have the audio, so I'm still going to share that, but just wanted to let you know. And let's get back to the vlog. Uh, my name is Paul Hawk. My name is uh, David Leskis. Uh, my name is Miyuki Kawamura. My name is Paul Jackson. Hi, uh, I'm Chris. My name is Jake Shanto. I'm Jax Durnamkang. Uh, I like doing complex origami. I try to find a different the theme that I'm doing every time. So right now I'm doing uh, a lot of color change models. The kind of origami that I like the most are uh, animals, mainly mammals. I love polyhedra so much. So I love uh, uh, geometric shape. So I created many, many uh, modular works. What do I like to fold? Um, primarily origami that it's enjoyable to fold. I mostly work on complex human figure models, but I also do some animals and sort of mythical creatures, but my main focus is on human figures. I tend to fold expressive origami, um, mostly human figures centered around social and environmental issues. I usually like folding just like stupidly complex origami. I was uh, looking for the most interesting models that I made in the recent times to, to bring to the exhibition. And I was trying to enhance the exhibition with making some custom stands. So a lot of recent stuff, I kind of try to showcase the different themes a little bit. So there's a skeleton, there's a lot of uh, color changed letters, Chinese and Japanese. Uh, and there's some, some birds with feathers. I like the cat a lot. Uh, I actually didn't uh, originally plan to make the color change character for the cat. I just want to make a cat with a really detailed face. And so I was trying to do that and spent hundreds of test folds doing just the face. And then at some point I figured out I have enough paper to write uh, the cat on one side. And then I also figured out I could write Neko on the other side. So, so that, that was pretty fun to, to figure out. I brought um, some animals mainly. I brought an iguana, a cow, um, a shark, a pegasus, and also I brought um, a big wyvern that I just finished in last week. Yeah, that was pretty much it, yeah. Okay, so uh, commonly I made uh, a kind of three-dimensional polyhedral structures, but recently I make uh, also uh, a kind of three-dimensional geometrical shape by using a uh, modular technique. So uh, uh, in this convention, I uh, bring many, many <laughs> pieces. Yeah, um, the exhibit has almost exclusively stuff that I've made this year and in 2022 last year. Um, I think my favorite pieces generally are the more recent ones because I feel like they're a little higher quality than some of the older work. They feel more refined. Um, the piece titled War's Toll that I have on a wood slice I like quite a bit. I think it's one of my better works. It's like I put a lot of time into making sure the limbs were fully closed and that it looks good from all 360 degrees. Um, I also think the dragon that I designed recently is really good where 
I really focused on making the piece really efficient and yet having a ton of details like scales, eyes, teeth, etc. So I just so I had like two kind of main series in my exhibition. One was uh, this one of those series was a farmer praying for rains and then um, you know because there's a lot of drought and issues of water scarcity in certain parts of India um, the piece kind of represented the farmer praying for rains and then inevitably not getting any rain and then he probably moved to another city or found other work. So the second piece in that series is his turban lying on the earth, um, like kind of symbolic. And then the third piece is just the earth. So um, I also try to have that represented in my crease patterns. So the crease patterns themselves of all three of those pieces are, uh, it's a triptych. So it's each crease pattern is like parts of it are retained and lost throughout the series. Um, and that was intentional. And then I also displayed um, this um, Indian farmer that I folded and some sheep. Um, and, you know, there are some similarities between the crease patterns of those two for a similar purpose. So I have a lot of animals in there, but the highlight is going to be my dinosaur skeleton, which is from one uncut square. Yes, it is one uncut square. And I'm very proud of where I got in because it's only my second ever design, but it also took seven months to do with so much and I had to do a lot of experimenting because like there there are a lot of structures I was unfamiliar with that I had to test out. Was that not cool? And let me tell you, seeing these folds in person was even more impressive. So while we're at it, let me actually show you my exhibition. This year, my exhibition was different than all the others I've had in the past. I actually categorized each part of the table by theme, kind of. So let's check it out. So starting from the left, I have the big origami models. And so this includes the statue of David and the two dragon plate armor assassins, one of them with the sword version and the other that I made during the tutorial. I was really excited to show all three of these because they have some of the most shaping out of anything I've ever done. Obviously the David has a lot of muscle tones and it's a very different approach in terms of shaping. And then the dragon plate armor assassins have a bunch of kind of my signature bevel techniques and a bunch of layered pleats and also feature some of the most dynamic posing of any of the others. And moving on to the middle section, I have my signatures. So this is of course the square twist samurai that Marco Gami and I collaborated in designing as well as the head empties. So both versions, the normal version and the one holding the head. And you can notice behind, I actually brought some metal prints with the crease pattern arts just to kind of accentuate those models as the signatures right in the middle. The idea of displaying something non-origami was to complement the origami themselves, to really kind of draw people's eyes and show that it's a bit different than everything else out there. Speaking of which, you can get these metal prints as well as just some poster prints on my store right now if you would like. And moving to the right side of the table, I have the fantasy section. So this fantasy section is a little bit mixed. There's actually my Ryujin 3.5 uh, fold that Satoshi Kamiya designed. I featured that along with the uh, Power of Friendship that Brandon Wong and Chris Conrad and I collaborated on at the last origami convention. But besides those two, the others are also my designs. You can see a lot of dragons. There are the headed dragon series. So the one, two, and three headed dragon, where the two headed dragon has that tutorial I made. So I featured those three together. And I also have my uh, 24 grid sword and shield version two on display. and. You might think, oh, why is that one there with the dragons? Well, that's because the final dragon is a dragon with the swordsman attached into one model. And this was designed for the Origami Dan death battle. So it's kind of cool to juxtapose dragons, the swordsman on his own, and then a fold that has both of them as one origami. So in total, this is the least amount of origami models I've brought to an exhibition, but I feel like it represents me the most. You know, pretty much everything here I designed, except for the region, of course. And I think that's something new that I'll bring where it just shows 
full on originality and kind of my genre that I like to do. And the last thing I'd like to highlight about my exhibition is the custom lighting. So you might notice those blue light bars on the bottom of my table. And I brought these because I didn't like how yellow the lights in the exhibition room originally were. So I wanted something to not just kind of, again, highlight my origami models, but to contrast the pure yellow light and, you know, add some of those shadows that I want from the underside of the origami, just so people have a nicer time seeing all the details. And to complement these lights, I added verticality to the exhibition by making some boxes for the models to stand on. Um, so having them raised up both makes it easier for people to see at their eye level. It lets the light shine up higher at the origami and it lets me stack them and organize them so it doesn't look cluttered and each one has its own spacing. And ultimately, I want to mention that so that maybe if you're thinking about displaying origami in the future, you can take some of these tips, get inspired, and maybe do something like this yourself. Speaking of which, both the display stands that hold up the origami, the light bars, and a power source on how those light bars stayed in the exhibition all convention long are available on my website. I have affiliate links all there in the miscellaneous section. Go check that out. Now the exhibition is awesome, but let's check out the other big events that happened during the convention. There were pretty much one per day. So on Friday, we watched Paul Frasco and Ryan Dong fold the largest origami traditional swan ever. It was from an 18 by 18 foot uncut square. Really impressive to see them work. Um, if you've been watching for a while, you might know I've done like a 12 by 12 foot origami Western dragon by Shuki Kato. So there's like tons of struggles in folding that big and 18 foot square is absolutely massive. So that was really fun. There was a bunch of people watching them do it and it took like around an hour for them to complete. On Saturday, there was the Taro's Amazing Race. Now this is kind of like um, an amazing race format, of course, by the name, but origami themed. So various teams tackled different origami challenges in order to try to get points to win um, and get first. So some of these challenges were really interesting, such as, you know, taking paper, uh, folding it into a ball and trying to roll it into some bowling pins, see how many you could hit. And then there were some more folding related ones, such as completing a modular um, and this one was actually really tough uh, you can see quite a few of the representational folders actually struggling with it quite a bit to put together and others like um, having an origami model or animal held above someone's head and someone else has to guess what animal it is by one of their teammates acting as the animal, kind of like a charades. So tons of different origami challenges were present and I think everyone had a lot of fun. Um, there's, you know, things for everyone there, both experienced folders and especially new people to the convention, new folders, and just everyone gets to have a great time. We can even hear from Tej, one of our scholarship winners on why this was his favorite event. So hello everyone. I'm Tej Patel. I'm from India. So just yesterday we had Taros, which is the origami style race competition. And it was such a fun event. And together, like speaking of this convention in general, it's, it's like you suddenly, you are a lone folder when you are in your space and you don't interact with much origamist on daily basis. But you come over here and almost everyone shares the same joy, the same pain of box pleating, creating the same grid. So it's nice to have conversations regarding that, sharing our creations or sharing our learnings and just having fun in general. And lastly, on Sunday, there was the oversized folding. And you've seen this in the previous vlogs. Uh, it's super fun, giant nine foot squares big teams just trying to fold something within around 35 to 45 minutes. So it's a lot of team effort because it's actually not a lot of time and just a ton of variety of models all being folded together. 
And this year I had such an awesome team. We had Chris, Damian, David, Tej, Nooper, Bodo. Everyone is an advanced folder here or and or designer. So we did something pretty cool. We started out by folding Bodo's whale because that seemed like the perfect animal to fold with such a large paper. It's pretty simple. There's a good amount of details, but it's very doable with a large sheet of paper because there's nothing crazy going on. However, we, I guess, underestimated our abilities and were able to start finishing the whale super quick. So I quickly grabbed another giant roll of paper so that we could st start on our second fold, which is Bodo's milk model. Now, I don't think any of us actually knew how this was gonna turn out. For one, it's not a color changed paper. And two, the milk carton is a 3D model. So generally with larger paper, it's a lot heavier. So we weren't sure if the milk was even gonna stand on its own, but it ended up working perfectly. It was a little bit of a challenge to get the milk to be 3D, but thankfully we had Damian to help us get that opened up and we were able to close out the milk model. And I think it's super, super cool. I mean, it literally looks like a giant milk carton. Overall, this is one of my favorite events at the convention. You get to see people try all sorts of different models from this giant paper. For example, there was a Satoshi Kamiya rose crane. There's this awesome banana design, a couple geometric boxes, a whole bunch of different animals. It's just so, so cool. Now, after the oversized folding event was over, there were still some remaining giant sheets left and some people decided to keep folding. Now, the benefit of this was there was no time limit. So the folders got as much time as they needed to make something super cool. So here we have some new friends, Ryan, Nathan, and Davis, who folded Mark Kirschenbaum's drummer. Now, this is pretty crazy. They worked really hard during the night and then through the next day to get this done. It is by no means an easy model to fold from regular paper. And the fact that they were able to do it from the giant nine foot squares was really impressive. And you can see it for yourself. All three events were really awesome and made each day special. Now, those events happened at night times, but what was happening during the day? Of course, classes. So the classes were really awesome. I got to take some cool ones. You got to see the fold of Bodo's owl that I took uh, during the convention at the beginning of this video. And I also took some other Bodo classes. Now, the first class that Bodo taught was his dolphin design. And this has got to be one of the coolest classes I've ever been to because Bodo gave us snacks from Germany. So we got some legit gummy bears and got to learn a really cool model at the same time. I gotta say, it just kind of hits different when you have a great snack with a great teacher doing origami. And in addition to taking classes, I got to teach as well. So I taught two of my designs, which were the anglerfish and the battle mage. So the battle mage was designed specifically to be able to teach and still represent some of the origami I do. It is a 22.5 type design with some grafting and a little bit of box plate maneuvering, but it's simple enough that it can be taught during a class and probably shapes more afterwards. But it was a fun experience and I think it was a good challenge. Got to share some shaping knowledge and folding quite in a condensed form, but it was great. And the anglerfish is actually an old design of mine, which I had only taught at online conventions. So this was really cool because people had been requesting uh, this, you know, design to be taught in many forms, either, you know, release the diagrams, make a tutorial, etc. That's still not going to happen yet. It's still a private design, but keep tuned soon and it might come out. Um, but this class was super awesome. It was my more popular class, which was really cool. And you can see all the people there that were able to fold the anglerfish looks awesome. And it means a lot to me to everyone who took my class. And that was my convention experience. 
and I am a pretty experienced convention goer nowadays, but how does the experience change for someone when it's their first time? Thankfully, I got to ask a couple friends who are awesome folders that got to come to the convention for the first time, and let's hear what they think about the origami convention. Uh, hi, my name is Kara. I go by Karagami on uh, social media. I do a lot of uh, paper folding, uh, but I also do some origami as well. I just taught my uh, dollar cat model uh, today, which is really fun. Uh, so, yeah, it's been really cool seeing all of the... Just went to the exhibition. So cool. There's like some insane stuff there. It's like, you gotta see it. Just like sitting at tables and like people will just teach stuff just for fun. Um, yes, you, you're here for the classes, but you don't realize there's so many like classes that you didn't realize you'd be taking just by meeting people and talking to people, so. Uh, my name is Greg Benny. Uh, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. I like to fold representational origami, uh, mostly. Uh, I do like to fold simpler models, but I'll, I'll fold really anything. It's been wonderful. Everyone has been extremely kind and helpful. Um, I've learned so much since I've been here. My favorite moment of the origami convention was talking to Paul Jackson uh, and him telling me all these really great historic moments in origami and a lot of really funny kind of behind the scenes moments too that have really happened over the years in a lot of conventions, and uh, I think that was really special. Would you recommend people to come to an origami convention? <sighs> For sure. Uh, if, if you have the resources, if you are around, and if you are free in that time, do please come. And it's not just the in-person co convention. There, there was an origami convention online as well, and it was just as fun as this is. This is much more fun that I can say, but yeah, participate in origami events, whatever is happening. Take up initiative. You can also start a community and then have folders who fold together. That's fun. So, yeah, do visit conventions like this. <laughs> and as you can see, I think everyone's favorite part about origami conventions is just being able to meet other people with the same interest and, you know, becoming friends. It's way different being able to be person to person than like an online type of thing and it's really cool just to do a bunch of origami and then just hang out chat get some food all that sort of stuff together it's uh one of the most special parts of the convention and i totally agree that it's my favorite part as well now speaking of friendship and the power of friendship one might say uh you might remember how the power of friendship fold was designed at the previous origami convention with me, Brandon, and Chris. This year, unfortunately, Brandon couldn't make it, but we had Bodo. So there was a new model that was born. It was me, Chris, and Bodo in a collaborative effort to make something cool at the convention. And here's how that went down. So we actually started chatting with each other weeks before the convention, just trying to figure out what we wanted to do and the consensus between us was something simple that we could fold won't take too long you know we want to enjoy the convention but also do something special that represents the three of us each well as things tend to turn out the part about it being simple ended up wholly going away and we made something that really represented the three of us and when i mean represented the three of us I mean that literally. And now I would like to present me, Bodo, and Chris holding the paper that we folded. This is Folder's recursion, and I think you can understand what that means. It was really hilarious explaining to other people at the convention what we were making because they were so confused at first when we told them that we were making us. And Specifically, we were making us making the origami. Uh, it was a whole ordeal, but it blew everyone's minds. And I think it blew our minds as well at the crazy concept of doing this and actually being able to achieve it at the convention. 
Now, this was made possible because of the combined design skills between Chris, Bodo, and I, with a lot of expertise on Bodo and Chris's side to get the correct format and the collaborative effort between the three of us to make three human figures that would represent us together. And you can kind of tell even the height difference worked out in the end as well. So yeah, the power of friendship led to the folder's recursion. Really awesome and a great origami folding experience. Now that was the end of the convention, but I had one more special thing that I got to check out. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you might remember the video I made about Yuho Samurai and why it's the best one ever. It just so happened that it was being displayed at an art gallery in New York City at the same time. Yuho was part of the Smallest Beautiful exhibition, and it is one of the most amazing presentations of art that I've seen. Everything there is at the minuscule scale, and has tons of different mediums and tons of different themes. So, of course, Yuho's was origami and paper fooling. Not only was the samurai there, but there were a few other of his signature designs that were presented so nicely and highlighted the beauty of origami extremely well. It was an absolute honor to be able to see this in person and also get to appreciate the many other artists featured as well. So have I convinced you to come to an origami convention sometime? Well, I hope I have because they are truly special. I think you got a good picture on what happens at an origami convention and how many people you get to meet and just the benefit of being around other origami folders. There's nothing else quite like it. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching my experience at the Origami USA convention, and maybe I'll see you at one soon. I'm going to the San Francisco Pacific Coast origami convention very soon, so I'm excited to see people there. And last thing before I go, I just want to thank everyone who made the convention special. That's the organizers, everyone who showed up, the extremely talented folders who exhibited and taught classes, and of course, our special guests who came from very far parts around the world to enjoy origami together. And I also want to thank all of you for watching and just helping grow and spread the origami community. The larger the community is, the better chance that the conventions are going to be even more awesome down the line. So thank you so, so much. And everyone who was mentioned in this vlog will have their links down in the description. So go check them out as well. Share this video with friends, even friends who are not folders, and maybe they'll be able to see how awesome the origami community really is. See you in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze. Now I'm